Newton would work. Oh, and we've got homework three and four. I think four is doing like midnight Friday morning or something like that. And so Thursday, we'll play Stump the Chump. Bring homework problems that have you stumped, okay? And I'll see if I can work them, all right? So we can, we'll spend about 15 minutes doing that so that after class you can rush home and get them inputted and be done. All right, here we go. Let's say we're in a balloon, all right? And the balloon starts off, here's our little balloon. Okay, here's our little balloon. Here's our, here's our little Ed Asner voice guy. All right, did y'all see the movie Up? Y'all see Up? Yeah. First 20 minutes of that kind of got to me, but after that I was like, would you take that thing off from around him? It was driving me nuts. But anyway, um, it's going to accelerate at 2.5 meters per second squared. It's going to go up. All right. That's its overall acceleration. So it's really accelerating pretty fast because the balloon then, um, so we're accounting for the pull of gravity. So it's going up at 2.5 meters per second squared. When it gets to, when the balloon gets to a final velocity, balloon, balloon gets to a final velocity of 15 meters per second, right at that instant, we drop a rock, okay? We want to know how long that rock is in the air, okay? When the balloon gets to here, drop a rock. How long is it in the air? Is the rock in the air? That's a good free fall problem to start on. I, I had a different one I was going to pick, but this is a good one to do. All right. Well, here we go. All right. First of all, to figure out how long something is in the air, if I drop it, what's one thing we might want to know? Yeah, how high it was when we dropped it. Can we get the height of that balloon from the information that we have here? We gotta find what's oh what's the initial what's the balloon's initial velocity? Assuming, yeah, zero meters per second. So from this, here's his acceleration. So from this, this, and this, can I get a height? Not much trouble. Yeah. I can get a height. I, I sure can. I can use um, this formula right here. Uh, the height is going to equal y final minus y initial. All right, and we're going to assume here that y initial is also zero. Okay. All right, so I can get, I can get the initial height here because I wind up with 15 squared equals zero squared plus uh, 2 times 2.5 times some y. So I get 15 squared over 5 equals y. I did a bunch of algebra there in my head, okay, rather quickly. did a bunch of algebra. And you get 225 divided by 5, so this is 45 equals y. 45 meters. Okay, so this balloon is at 45 meters. Now, free fall says this, 45, well, for, and, and free, by the way, free fall means, I'm going to take a small break here, free fall means this, that um, it's not necessarily falling, it means the only acceleration we're concerned about is the acceleration due to gravity, okay, is gravitational acceleration, all right. There's no other, there's no like retro rockets on this rock that we're going to drop that's going to fire it down or shoot it up and things like that. It's, it's just the only acceleration we have to worry about is gravity. So literally the moon is in free fall around the earth because it's the only thing that's holding it there is gravity as it moves around. It wants to go straight, but the earth keeps saying, no, 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 stay in orbit here due to the gravitational pull. All right. 
So it works like a tetherball type thing. Okay, so the same thing here. Free fall means this. And um, so we've got a formula too that um, we want to know the time. Okay, well, we want to know the time. We've got a few of them we can find, but the, the, the best one for the time, if we already know the height, so look at this, V naught T, oh, yeah, it's V naught T minus one half G T squared. That'll tell me how long something's in the air when I drop it, okay? All right, now here's the key part. Y, this would be our Y final, is 45 meters, which equals, um, V naught T, all right, here's the, here's the million dollar question to this problem. My balloon is going to 15 meters per second, I drop the rock, I drop the rock. How, what's the speed of the rock right when I let go of it? Is it zero or is it 15 meters per second? Okay, how many think it's 15? How many thought it was zero before they came to my office? Right, okay, all right, anyway, it's, it's actually going 15 meters per second up. That's where people keep messing this up, okay? Whoa, lost my balance every minute, all right? So right here, because if you think about it, if you think about it, when I let go of the rock, at that, at that instant when I let go of it, it is, if I'm holding it right here, right, it's moving up in a nice constant, it's going at a nice speed of 15 meters per second, and right when I let it go, it's still going. All of a sudden, I didn't throw it down to make it go to zero. It's going 15 meters per second, okay? Now, it looks like when you drop it, it looks like when you drop it that you're moving away from it really fast. Well, the thing is, instantly, as soon as you drop it, gravity takes over and accelerates it down at 9.8 meters per second squared, and you're accelerating up at 2.5 meters per second squared, so it, you gain a lot of distance away from it pretty quick. It looks like it's gaining a lot of speed, and it is. Relative to you, it's, it's getting going pretty quick, all right? So therein lies the rub to this problem, to find the time. This would be 15t minus 4.9t squared. Uh-oh, what do we have here? Nasty quadratic. Nasty, nasty quadratic. But it's not that bad. Quadratics are, aren't, aren't bad. You remember how to solve quadratics? Did y'all learn a little, the minus b minus thing? x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. In physics, if this guy is ever negative, we're doing something that's physically impossible. Okay, if, if you're, I think they call that the determinant of that. If that is ever zero or negative, zero is fine. Zero is fine. If it's ever negative, we've got issues. We're doing something that's physically impossible. Okay. All right. Okay, so there's your free fall problem. That, that'll, that'll get you through, I think that was 228 or something like that on uh, problem. Homework number three. I think you guys, I, I don't want to stress you anymore. I was going to add a homework five, but it feels like I'm piling on. So I don't want to stress you anymore. Once you get three and four done, breathe, and five will pop up there after Thursday's class. Okay. Yes? Um, does it matter that the velocity, like your initial velocity, is going in the up direction and the gravity is going the other way? Where? Oh, yeah, that gives us our initial velocity, that positive 15. Yeah. But, and then you still account for gravity being negative then? Yeah, because as soon as I let go of it, there's no other force acting on it. So it's negative 9.8 because I'm going up. He, he, he reached a velocity of going up at 15 meters per second. which will work. Okay. 
Have you all ever seen that? Uh, there's some YouTube. I forgot to load it, but there's some YouTube video of the guy who has all the helium balloons tied to his lawn chair. And he goes way up in the air. He actually flies that way. There's people that have... Then one guy got in real trouble. I mean, he almost died doing it because he got it up so high. But anyway, before I tried that, I'd find friends with a bunch of BB guns or something that get me down. All right. Anyway, so there's our free fall problem. So, with that in mind, let's do the first three questions. We got five questions on our quiz. Let's do the first three questions. Well, we've still got, well, we've got free fall fresh in our head. Oh, by the way, I found a cool thing on, um, they're supposed to, uh, on, on the instructor's web page for the Mastering Physics. And they've got these wonderful little things. Have you all ever been in one of those clicker classes where they got the clickers? I, those things are really high maintenance to get started and everything, so I don't like it too much. And plus, just the whole idea of clickers sounds like you're training bird dogs instead of students or something. I don't know. Just, you know, click here, whatever. But anyway, the, 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 it makes for great quiz questions. So that was a good thing. So I found those, and that's what we'll be doing. These are clickers without, clicker questions, but without clickers. Okay? All right. So here we go. Not that one. I thought I had the other one open. That's the only thing I got open. Okay. Hold on, don't pay any attention right now. No, this is quiz two, but it's actually quiz three. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these, I can load these on Blackboard for you all, these quizzes. And guess where I'm going to take the conceptual test questions. They'll probably have like four problems to do and maybe 15 conceptual questions. They're going to come straight from here. Okay? So if you study these things, they'll be on Blackboard for you. So when we're done. All right, here we go. Now remember, you can work together. Work together. They call it think, pair, share, or something like that. You get together. I don't do it exactly the way you're supposed to, but it's close enough. All right. You throw a ball upward with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. Assuming there's no air resistance, what is the speed when this thing returns to you? Discuss this amongst yourselves if you want to. When it comes back down to you, what's the magnitude of the speed? Just, just, yeah, no, no, just one A, B, C, or D, or E. Okay. First of all, this is MCAT or DCAT. What do they call the dental thing? What do they call that? DAT. The DAT, the DAT, not the DCAT. Okay. Well, anyway, all right, MCAT training. This answer is always wrong. Okay. Nine times out of ten, that answer is always wrong. They just put it in there so that you feel good and move on. All right? So you go, well, obviously, they don't give me enough. And so, so you'll pick that. Never, ever pick that one. All right? So there you go. You, have to, you got a 15% already. All right? Because you just know that you're not supposed to pick that one. All right? Now then, what, it, what's the correct answer here? Any volunteers? Go ahead, bark it out. What is it? B, 
Anyone think it's A? Of course not, because they know that B is the right answer now, so no one's going to say, oh, I think. <laughs> That's the advantage of the clickers. You can hide. You can be anonymous, except the teacher can go back and look and go, oh, yeah. I always knew Billy was an idiot. But anyway, um, so you go, all right, so it's B, 10 meters per second. And I heard it over here. What goes up must come down by the nature of love symmetry. If, you throw it, if there's no air resistance, then you're good. Okay. Now notice what they asked here. It, it did change direction, and all the, Rashan is really running with this. Here's the key word: speed. What does speed mean? That's magnitude. That is not a. That's a scalar quantity. Okay. So it has the same speed, just has different directions. Exactly. Exactly. All right. You ready for question two? Here you go. Boom. Free fall again. We're, th we're shot an arrow in the air. Where it lands, I do not care. After it leaves your hand, at what point in its flight does it have the maximum value of acceleration? Acceleration. Okay. As soon as it leaves your hand, go ahead and discuss it among yourselves. I'll give you... One minute. One minute seems like an eternity when you're standing up here letting you all wrestle. What's your guess, Rachel? So, right, the entire thing is zero, because when it accelerates, it's displacement over time, and displacement is zero, so. I would just say it's constant. It makes perfect sense. Okay, now remember, this is kinematics, so we're always dealing with once the motion has started, don't get hung up on, well, if it's in my hand and I'm throwing, I'm pushing up on it with a force, okay? So it's where, right when it's released. Okay, I don't know if that helps. Okay, first of all, what are we looking for? Are we looking for speed or acceleration? Acceleration. Okay, so what's the only acceleration that we're dealing with in free fall? Gravity. Does it ever change? No. So which is the correct answer? A. Exactly. And, and Rashonda said it quite eloquently. She said, as soon as it leaves your hand, gravity's constant everywhere. It's 9.8 no matter where you are. It's 9.8. Now, the velocity is always changing. Okay? It's always getting slower. And then when it gets to its maximum height, then it speeds up coming down. All right? Okay. So all these other distractors in here are, um, see this one right here, you're thinking of the forces. The question would be, when does gravity take over? Right when it leaves, just after it leaves your hand. That's when gravity takes over. You've got an acceleration pushing it up, okay? But once it leaves your hand, instantly gravity takes over. So that's what, that would be, what is this pathway thing doing on here? Oh yeah, I was looking at y'all's pretty pictures. So there we go. All right. So I can get your names right for most of you. I'll have it by Thursday, though. When you turn in your quiz, I'll pass them back. I'll have it. I'll have it by Thursday. Okay. All right. So let's do question three, and then we'll then we'll have lecture, and then then we'll do the last part of the thing. I got to teach you about two. We got to do projectile vomiting. I mean projectile motion. All right, so here we go. Question three. All right, now we're dropping a rock. Oh, this was a good one. This afternoon, they, uh, they had problems. I promised Ting Yi I would stop pacing. Sorry. Can't help it. Oh, yeah, I'm not supposed to talk to the help, am I? Okay. All right. 
You drop a rock off a bridge. When the rock has fallen four meters, you drop a second rock. As the two rocks continue to fall, what happens to their velocities? Discuss. Rhode Island. It's not a road. It's not an island. Discuss. This gets down to the actual definition of acceleration. This was a tricky one. Throwing rocks to, up there, part two. Throwing rocks at the instructor. There you go. All right, it's talking about the change in velocities. Not about whether or not they're equal velocities or um, any of that stuff. It's about the rate of change of the velocity, which is the definition of acceleration. Okay? So the, so the key thing to think about here is, again, free fall, acceleration. What's the only acceleration we're dealing with? And it is constant, right? So therefore, See, where you're, where, so therefore, which one's the right answer? A is the correct answer. Now, what you're thinking, now here's what I, I'm going to make an assumption. What you're thinking is, oh, well, that first rock is going much faster, is going faster once I drop that second rock. Yeah, it is. But they're both, their rate of change of acceleration is going to be the same. Okay? In other words, each of them are going to change their acceleration. For every second that they're in the air, they're going to gain a velocity unit of 9.8 meters per second going down. Okay? Now, after four seconds, in fact, after four seconds, when you drop that one, V equals um, GT. So therefore, after four seconds, that one is going 70 something. What's, what's, what's uh, 9.8 times four? Uh, oh, uh, no, not 70, I'm just doubling it. What's 9.8 times 4? Right around 40. Listen, all right, just for, to guesstimate, let's call gravity 10 for right now, okay? We, we've gotten closer to the center of the Earth, all right? So gravity's now 10, just for this. So after four seconds, that one rock is going 40 meters per second. But one second later, how fast is it going to be going? No, no, no. 50. One second later, if it's at 40, one second later it's going to be going how fast? 50. Two seconds later, it's going, or a second after that, it's going to be going how fast? 60. Okay? This one, the, the second rock you drop after one second, how fast is it going? 10. After the next one? 20. So it's, it's, so it's this game. So A is the right answer. In other words, acceleration is the rate of change of the velocity. And so, since it's constant, those would be constant. These physics questions like this are hard. They really are. They, 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 they are tricky. Because, because you start thinking, oh, well, that one rock is already going so much faster. That's within your head, just from your, from your normal experiences. But that's not what we're asking. Yes? Oh, they'd be parallel lines. Yeah, okay. Uh, what's your name again? Jim. What? Jim. Jim. Yeah, I got to keep an eye on you, Mr. Helper. No. Uh, here. Here's what Jim's question was. Now, if we've got a graph of velocity versus time, for this very problem, that one that we already dropped that's at four seconds, it's already got a faster velocity. So it's going like this. The one we just now drop is down here, looking like this. See how its velocity is lower? But the two, graphically, they're parallel lines. Because the change, the acceleration is the slope. 
And so, they're, so they've got the same. So that's what it looked like graphically. Okay. Right. Yeah. Now, with notice, I didn't have the guts to put the uh, position, which would be two parallel, like parabola type things. All right. Okay. Good. There we go. All right. Enough of that. So you can put that aside for right now, and we will go on to the laser light show for the lecture. From current slide. Here we go. Now, we're going to be talking about motion in two dimensions. Up to this point, we've done nothing but motion in one dimension. Okay? Just in one dimension. Going in a straight line. Either going straight up and down, or we're accelerating a car, or a ball rolling, or something like that. Going straight. Okay? Now, what we're doing now is we are... Um, Notice the x, y axis for the position of this board. I guess she's throwing this rock and she's going to try and hit that block which is out there in the water. Okay? Now notice it's posi the position of this block is that the x value is positive 13 and the y value is negative 20. Okay? So if this was an x, y axis system, it's down here in the fourth quadrant. Okay? And she's thrown this ball at an initial velocity of 40 of, uh, we don't know. She's thrown this ball at, a, at um, some initial velocity at an angle of 45 degrees south of the x-axis. All right. Now in trig class, how many of you have taken trig? All right. How many of you just went into a panic because I said trig and you haven't taken it yet? Don't worry. All right. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. So anyway. What we've got here is, in trig class, they'd make you measure this angle going all the way around, like that. In other words, it's whatever 360 minus 45 is. 15? 315 degrees? We don't do it that way. We just say, okay, we'll break it down 45 degrees positive and 45 degrees negative. Now, I'll get to that in a minute. Now, we break our vectors down. Notice that's a velocity vector. Okay? And here's what we're going to be talking about. Here's what we're going to be talking about. There, oh, there we go. Units of chapter 3 are components of the motion and vector addition and subtraction. That's all we'll get done today. And then we'll talk about projectile motion and relative velocity. Relative velocity is one of my most favorite things to talk about because when you take me for physics 2, when we actually get into um, relativity, it gets funny. Things get screwy. Okay? where we get into the whole question of, here's the question. Let's say Rashawn is going 0.7 times the speed of light towards me. And I'm going 0.7 times the speed of light towards her. Okay? Normal relative velocity says that I'm going 1.4 times the speed of light, according to, to Rashawn. Doesn't work in, when you get close to the speed of light. Now, normal things... If you're driving in a if, real, little sidebar here on relative velocities, this is why you should always wear your seat belts while you're in a parking lot. All right? If you're driving along at 10 miles an hour and somebody else is driving along at 10 miles an hour and you have a head-on, is that the same thing as driving your car into a brick wall at 20 miles an hour? Yes, it sure is. Okay? And we'll get to that. We'll, we'll show mathematically why that's the case. But when you get close to the speed of light, that's not the case anymore. Yeah, okay. I'm going to let Jim think about that all until he takes physics too. Okay. All right. Okay. It says that things get weird when you get close to the speed of light. All right. So here we go. Now, we've got this ball. Now, the reason they, they put it, this graph, this, this little thing says a lot. That, um, I've, I've kind of started, I used to never teach using these things, but I kind of like the slides now. Um, anyway, because this graph says a lot. First of all, it's showing that for the same amount of time, the x component and the y component are both represent the same thing. Okay. In other words, this guy's 
time reference is not different than this guy's. Otherwise, we'd be living in split universes and all that. And we don't play that. Okay. All right. Okay. And the other thing is, I just want you to take a look at this graph. Notice this velocity vector here. It's the same length. What does that tell me about the acceleration of this? Oh, I wanted you to say that. What is the acceleration actually? Zero. Acceleration zero, which is constant, I guess. You could say that that's constant. Um, but you've got to be careful. If it was actually two, then if the acceleration was like two in this meters per second squared in this direction, then this vector would get be this size. This one would be a little bigger, 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 because it would get faster and faster. Okay, just like we have here, the velocity is going up. But if we have a constant, if we have zero acceleration, we just have straight lines going straight across. Okay, they don't change. All right, good. So we're going to break things down into components. Here's the only trig you need to know for this class. First of all, you need to know uh, good old sophomore geometry of the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The second thing you need to know is that the X component, I like the way this textbook does it because physics is hard enough without getting cute with this stuff. So I like the way this textbook does it. Anything in the x, you multiply by the cosine of the angle. Anything with the y is multiplied by the sine of the angle. OK? And um, if you have the old tiny calculators, I've even forgotten how to do it. Um, I think you go 45 cosine times this hypotenuse. And that v is the hypotenuse of this angle. Because notice, I can move this VY over here and have it right here, so I got a nice right triangle. And then the only other thing we're going to do is we're going to find the angle. Make sure your calculator is on degrees. You're going to find the angle by hitting the second key, hitting the inverse tangent key, and doing the Y divided by X. And that gives you the angle. This is a science class, not a math class. So I'm not going to go into the whys and hows of all that, of why it works. Just know that these things. These are your buddies. Cosine for the x component, sine for the y component, inverse tangent for the angle, to find the angle. Okay? There. All the trig that's fit to print, you just had it. It's all the trig you'll need to know. And, and you'll get used to it after a while. All right. Okay. As Ting Yi would say, Here's the deal. Here's the big picture on this. All right? This chapter three might be kind of scary. All right? But all I'm going to do, here's what your test question is going to look like. I'm going to tell you right now what the test question is going to look like. We're going to launch a soccer ball or a football or a golf ball at a certain angle at a certain velocity. You're going to tell me how far it went, how high it went, and how long it was in the air. That's all you that's that's chapter three in a nutshell. That's the big deal with chapter three. Okay? That's the deal with chapter three. Alright. And we'll have probably a little relative velocity thing on there. Okay? So it's all building up to that. So you don't have to panic when you're taking your test or you know, you'll already know. Okay, if I know, if I can find the, the distance it traveled, that's the range. If I can find how high, its maximum height that it went, or, or its height at different times, we'll also do that. Um, and if I can find the range, I'm golden. Okay, so here you go. The velocity has components. Okay, everything we're going to do is we're going to break it down into components. Vx is the velocity vector. So in other words, if I said I kicked a soccer ball at 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to find the x component, I would say 15 cosine of 30. And that would give me the x component of that velocity. Okay. If I said I kicked a soccer ball at 15 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to get the y component, I'd say 15 sine of 30. All right. Okay, and the magnitude of the velocity vector is going to be equal to this squared plus
plus this squared and take square root of it. All right. So you're either going to be given this or you're going to be given these guys and the angle. One or the other. You'll be given. I like to, for those of you that are new to this and just for the scope of this course, just give a nice, uh, you should be able to, when you get some emotion, initial velocity with an angle, you should be able to figure out how far it went, how high, and how long it was in the air. Everything else is just kind of gravy just to confuse the issue. All right. Here we go. Now, the components of the displacement are then given by this. Okay, so x naught equals, see there wasn't any acceleration, so it's just this. We don't have to add the 1 half axt squared here, or we don't have to add the 1 half ayt squared there. But notice, you do the work for the x and y components separately. Okay, then we combine them all together at the end. But the time for x and the time for y will be the same. Okay? Now here we go. There, the time's coming for both. See? These are your buddies. These are your pals. They're showing up again. You're just going to do the x component. Now, what we need to do now is I need to shut this off. Raise the screen and do an example so that you can see how this actually works, how you work a problem. I'm going to model how to do a problem here. If I can get the screen to turn off. Oh, good. I still have my. Okay. It's not behaving. Okay. There we go. Now it is. All right. Okay, this is this is the um, example that you had that's in your book. I think I can remember it. Okay, I'll go ahead and better safe than sorry here. So I'm gonna look this up. Okay, that's actually not a bad little problem there. Let's do this one. All right, here we go. The problem says this. Um, suppose that a ball has an initial velocity in the x direction, v naught x equals 1.5 meters per second. Now that's in the x direction. And um, it starts rolling at t naught equals zero. There we go. There's a better t naught. The initial time is zero. All right. And um, it has an then all of a sudden it experiences an acceleration in the y direction of positive. I think they say 2.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so here's basically what's going on. Got a ball rolling here at 1.5 meters per second. All of a sudden it starts to experience an acceleration pushing it that way at 2.8 meters per second squared. What's the path of this ball going to look like now? What's it going to do? Yeah, it's going to have a curved path. Okay, it's going to it's going to all of a sudden go whoa. All right, and it will continue, um, but guess what? It will never go straight. You know why? Because it's got this initial velocity of 1.5 meters per second. All right, 
and we're going to kind of get ahead of ourselves here just a little bit, but I make a claim. Here's my claim. Tell me if it's true or false that that 1.5 meters per second in the x direction, as long as there's a y component to the gravity, or to the, um, as long as the only accelerations in the y direction, that 1.5 meters per second in the x direction will never change. Is that a valid argument? Can I say that? Now, seventh grade science. For every object in motion, it will what? Stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside force. So, this guy is in motion at 1.5 meters per second going this way. Is anything impeding him in, this, in the x direction? No. Now, his displacement's going to change. He's going he's to change because he's feeling this force, but the x component has no acceleration, so it will continue at 1.5 forever. All right? Okay. So... What we do is we break this down into its components. Now, what we, what we want to do is we want to find what is the final velocity of x, what is the final velocity in the y direction, what is the position of x, and what's the final position of, in the y direction, and then we'll find the overall position, the distance that the thing has moved, the displacement it has gone from here to here. Okay. All right. Now, what we don't know is this. T final is equal to three seconds. T final is equal to three seconds. Now, here we go. We're good. You, break them, you break these down into their components. You go, okay, I got my X components over here. I got my Y components over here. Okay, so V naught X is equal to 1.5 meters per second. Based on that big long explanation I, I just said, what's the V final of X after three seconds in the X direction? 1.5, yeah, 1.5 meters per second. Am I getting my things all mixed up? No, we're still good. V final x will be 1.5 meters per second. What's the acceleration in the x direction? Zero. Exactly. Acceleration in the x direction is zero. All right. What's the initial velocity in the y direction? Based on the initial things that we were given. Ooh, zero. zero. What's the initial acceleration? Yeah, the acceleration is 2.8. Good. That's all right. The acceleration in the y direction is 2.8 meters per second squared. And it will stay constant throughout. It'll be a nice constant acceleration. So that means in the y direction, it's going to get going faster and faster, but in the x, it's going to just stay at 1.5. Okay. All righty. Well, let's figure out the final, the VFX then. Final VFX. Uh, well, we've already said, oh, it's 1.5 meters per second. And here's why. Here's why. Because we say that VFX is equal to V naught X plus A times T. AX times T. Well, what's AX? Zero. So this is equal to 1.5 meters per second. All right. And XF. The X component, if you know the time, if you know the time and you know the initial velocity in the X direction, the X component of the position is real easy because it's just rate times time. It's a piece of cake then. Okay. In other words, okay, well, let's just go through it the long way. Is equal to x naught, which we said was zero, plus v naught x times t plus one half a t squared. Well, this guy's zero. This guy was zero. So we get x final is just equal to 
1.5 times 3, which equals 4.5 meters. Okay. All right. Now, let's find Vy, the final velocity in the y direction. So Vy final will equal um, V naught in the y direction plus A times Ay times T. They gave us the three seconds. So this will equal zero plus 2.8 times three, which is, this is meters per second squared times seconds. So six plus 2.4 is 8.4 meters per second. All right, and the final position vector for the, in the y direction, in the y direction would be y naught plus v naught y times t plus one half a y t squared, which plugging in this is zero plus zero plus one point four times 9, which gives me 12.6 meters. Okay, so over here, over here, I'm going to go ahead and draw the, uh, the position vector, the final displacement. So this is 4.2. What do we say? Five meters. And then in the y direction, it displaced 12.6 meters. So the, so the actual displacement from there to there is from here to here. D is equal to the square root of 4.5 squared plus 12.6 squared. Whatever that comes out to be. And this angle theta. Single so theta is equal to um, the inverse tangent. And the way you find the inverse tangent, for those of you that are new to trig, hit your second key on your calculator, then you hit your tangent key. And you'll get this tangent to the negative 1 flashing with the parentheses, and you put the y over the x. It's one reason I went to this this text was. They just leave it nice and straightforward. They figure there's enough physics to learn. We don't need to learn all this trig. So those are, that's basically all the trig you need to know. Okay? Now we'll do a lot more with the breaking things down into components when we meet on Thursday. All right, I'll, I'll let that percolate in your minds for a minute. It goes pretty quick. Rachel and Rashonda and this whole crew, Serge, everybody, sorry, you should tell me. Put this down. There we go. That helps. All right. Let's turn this on. Turn it on. Are we flashing? Yes. Okay. Let me lower this, and we're going to spend about seven minutes on vectors, and <laughs> you're going to take a quiz over them. That would be great. Last two questions on the test or on, the, on your quiz. But you've seen how the quizzes go. They're not bad. After a while, though, we're going to start kind of doing them on our, kind of on our own, quasi, sort of. I just wanted you to get comfortable with the format, which I'm still trying to figure out, but we've got it. All right. So here we go. Okay, that's kind of the problem we were just doing just now. Notice how th this was moving in a nice straight line. This was basically the problem we just solved. And all of a sudden it starts moving like, notice this Vx never changes. Vx never changes. But vector wise, look what happens. If I take Vx and then, then tail to head, slide this tail to head over here, 
I get this guy. I get the resultant. Okay, so Vx plus Vy like this, you get the result. You um, uh, to add the vectors, all right? And to get the result, you got to do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. All right. You can add any vectors, which I think they go into here. Yes. This is a great illustration right here. All right. One way, the geometric method of adding vectors, one way you can do it, I kind of did it on the board over there like our first day of class, and some of you are like, what is he doing? This is what I was trying to do real quick. In other words, you get A, draw vector A. Well, this is one where the X component is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and the Y component is 1, 2. So it would look like 6X plus 2Y, and you put little hats over the X. Okay, and the second vector, if I draw the second vector, here's the second vector, notice, head, tail, up to head, and then the resultant vector goes all the way back to the origin, and you draw the resultant vector. Anybody here do any orienteering or map stuff with a map? Nobody? Orienteering? Okay. Well, I got a question for you. What do you think the vector minus b would look like? Here's vector b. What do you think, so this is a plus b. What do you think a minus b would look like? Yes, Michaela's right. So you kind of went, it would just be the opposite. It would be. It would just be this guy flipped over going down this way. Just the opposite. The back asthma is what we call it. That would be A minus B. And then the result of that would be this little guy coming in here. Now let's take a look at what the components of vector um, B are. B, if I draw my little um, coordinate axis system right here, B looks like it's 1x and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5y. So the first one was 6x plus 2y, and this one is 1x plus 5y. All right, so when I add it all together, I should get the x is added up and the y is added up, okay? And then the resultant would be this squared times this squared, and that gives me r, okay? That seems kind of nice and straightforward. It's not bad. It's not bad. And the actual angle of r would be the ay plus by the inverse tangent of ay plus by divided by ax plus bx. Okay, now that's a lot of, in my mind, where I do a lot of math and all that stuff, and I know this stuff, that made perfect sense to me. If you're brand new to this, you're going, he's talking to variables, and he's not writing anything down. He's driving me crazy. Well, well, we'll do enough of it. You'll see how it works. All right? Just wanted you to get exposed to it. Now, let's go on to the next slide here. Oh, okay, yeah, there's our minus b. Here's a plus b, a minus b. Notice, here, if b looks like this, then minus b just looks like that. These are nice little slides. And here you go. Here's what I was trying to get at. Uh, b over a, then once you get your ax and your by, then the inverse, C is equal to A plus B, and then the inverse tangent of that would be your angle right there. All right, so now you know enough. You guys are ready. Okay, so get out your, get out your little sheet of paper that you already took your first quiz on. And we're going to do questions four and five. Don't panic. I think you guys can do this. Go right here from current slide. Okay. Now think about this one for a second. Discuss with yourselves. If two vectors are given such that a plus b, x one vector a plus b equals zero, what can you say about the magnitude, remember vectors have magnitude and direction, of vectors a and b? Dun, 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 dun.
So think about what you just saw. That, that horror flick you just saw with the vector addition there. Just kind of think about this. I'm hearing good answers up here. And the rest of you are just like, okay, I know he's going to give us the answer. Let's just be quiet. He'll give us the answer. We can get out of here. <laughs> what? D. Anybody think it's D? Besides the crazies over here? You're right. Yeah. You're right. In other words, it's got the same magnitude. Remember, magnitude, it's got the same magnitude. So it looks like this. It looks like this. I'll draw it over here real quick. It'll look like this. Because remember, A plus negative A equals zero, right? So if I've got A, they, they threw you off by putting another vector in there, B, all right? If they just said A plus negative A, you'd have gone, well, yeah, it's got the same magnitude, just opposite direction, OK? <laughs> And then, then we add it uh, tail to head again. So tail, there we go. And then the displacement there is zero of that vector. So yeah, so the answer is D. Now this next question, this is going back to Ms. Crunchmeister's freshman algebra class or geometry class. Did you all, did you all do the, do you all remember the triangle inequality? Remember the triangle inequality? Did your teacher teach it with, I always taught my students with it with, pieces of spaghetti, okay? You take, break off the pieces of spaghetti, do the triangle inequality, here it comes. Now you can draw pictures, and you can talk with each other on this. Here we go. You're adding vectors of length 20 and 40. So these are displacement vectors with a magnitude of 20, and the other one has a magnitude of 40. What is the only possible resultant vector that you can obtain out of the following choices. So think about it. Draw it. Draw one that's 40 and one that's 20. Put one to the end. Draw a 40 and then put a 20 at the end and see out of these choices what's the only possible resultant vector that you could make. Okay. Excuse me. What's the formula for magnitude? Well, you got the Pythagorean theorem, but this one's actually a little bit more subtle than that. Okay? All right. Which two answers are absolutely wrong? Zero, yeah, and 100. And so if you extend the 100 argument, which one's absolutely wrong? 64. Okay. All right. Now, here's the deal. Ha, again. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. The, the right answer, by the way, is 37. And, and we'll, we'll take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. and raise the thing, and we'll draw the picture so that we can see how that works, actually.
Okay, now let's think about this. Uh, this is basically the triangle inequality is basically what we're doing, which says Which basically the triangle inequality says that if I have the sides of a triangle, A, B, and C, must be that A plus B is greater than C, A plus C is greater than B, and C plus B is greater than A. That's basically the triangle inequality. Okay, now what does all that mean? It means this. I think the answers that they had up there were this. A was 0, B was 18, C was 37, uh, D was 64, and E was 100. I'm scaring myself. I actually know what those were. All right. Now, let's just draw the triangle. Let's just draw. I've got a 40 meter vector like here. Now, on the end, I'm going to put my 20. Just because I'm going to add them up, right? That's the way we add them up. So there's my 20. Now, no matter how I rotate 20, he's going to, if I bring him all the way back down to here, that would be subtract, that'd be 40 plus negative 20, right? And what's, the, what's that number going to be? 40 plus negative 20. 20. It can't be 0 and it can't be 18. Right? That's impossible. Okay? Now, no matter how I twist this vector to get the maximum length, it's got to be like this. The maximum, the, the minimum it's going to be is 20. The maximum it's going to be is 60. And so what's the only number that's between 20 and 60? That thing. 37. Yeah, does that make sense? Why that? Yeah, so you you it's this was a problem so you could visualize vectors. What's that? The question was worded, I have a 40 meter vector and a 20 meter vector and I'm adding them. What's the uh, out of out of these numbers? Here's where you probably got hung up. You're going you're going, well, I don't know, give me the angle and I'll tell you what the result is. Well, they didn't give you that. They said just out of these numbers What's the only answer that would work? Anything between 20 and 60 basically will work. So if they just said, if they had 23, actually I got this wrong. Because I just eyeballed it and I thought 20 squared plus 40 squared equals 64. When you take the square root, but it doesn't. It's not even close. All right. So you may go. Turn. It, oh, if you got your extra credit. Yeah, turn your quizzes too, but don't put them together.